Welcome to the Project List YouTube channel. I'm going to show you how I upgraded my brakes from these 255mm solid discs to these 280mm ventilated discs. I got these brake calipers from a newer model car that came standard with 280mm ventilated discs. Unfortunately, the bolt holes don't align with the ones on my hub. After a bit of cat work, I came up with this design. I kept it simple so it's easier to machine. I then 3D printed this part to test fit it on the car. Well, it took some iterations, but hey. After test fitting, I knew all my measurements were correct, so I could have these parts machined. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos getting sponsored by PCBWay, so I thought why not try and get a quote for CNC machining. So I went to their website and started adding my drawings and materials. I chose Mild Seal, which is called S235 in Europe. The originals are cast iron. I haven't selected anything special yet. It's not even threaded now. And the site has already quoted $386.21 per part excluding VAT. The disclaimer also stated that it has to be reviewed by an engineer and will be assessed by complexity. So I expect the price to go up a notch after reviewing. So let's do some quick price guesstimates. One part comes in at $386.21. This brings two parts at $772.42. After revision it probably will add another 100 to 150. If we add China's VAT of 13%, shipping cost I expect to be another $100. And then import tax, <laughs> I mean legal theft. In my country it's gonna be 21%, so a total of $1351.57 or 1243.44 euro. Guess I'll have to do it myself then. This is my 1960 TOS FA4U knee mill. It's a conventional mill without a digital readout. I'm doing this old school. And it's only 64 years old, so it can't retire yet. Luckily, I had these bars of mild steel in my stock, so I have basically no material cost. Raw material is cut, so time to make some chips with the big face mill. I need to remove a lot of material, so instead of machining it all, I decided to go the quick and dirty way and hack some big chunks out with the angle grinder. To save some more time machining, I made this indent and cut it out with the angle grinder. This saves a lot of wear on the cutters. So I now have to make these bolt holes in the caliper bracket that connects it to the hub. Since my piece is still square in the corners, I can measure it from the edges. I got my edge finder and I moved it half the diameter to have zero point on the corner of the workpiece. Since my piece was clamped in this orientation, I thought to make the radius cut on the back as well, since I had dialed in my coordinates after drilling the bolt holes.
and for my next trick I brought in my tilting table. I had a bit of trouble finding the correct tension of hardware, but hey, these sliding nuts do just fine. And this is how the half finished part looks like. Unfortunately, my stock material was just a bit short, so I welded it up and machined it afterwards. But don't worry, it's not structural weld, it's to add a bit of material to the front of the part. I preheated it before welding, so all the moisture comes out, so it doesn't affect the weld and get pitting or craters. In the end, I cleaned up the radius left from the mill with a belt sander and it turned out great. One of the last machining operations on this part are the holes where the caliper will slide through. I used my edge finder again and repeated the process. After the first real test fit, I noticed the bracket was 2mm out of center. I didn't notice it on the 3D printed parts, but they were probably bending and flexing. No big deal. I machined the 2mm recess over the length of the bracket. I also machined a little pocket on the inside, so it won't hit the rough casting on the mating surface of the hub. One part is finished, but since it's old school machining, there is no button to press and make another. It's hard work, but since I had a bit more experience, from making the first one, the second part went way faster. 
I could do more machining operations on one friction position. I was wondering if I had to make this connection between the top half and the bottom half for extra strength and rigidity, since my part is built and almost twice as thick, but I thought to do it anyways, it makes me sleep better at night. I hope you guys liked the video and don't forget to like, subscribe or leave a comment if you want to see more machining content on the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, bye!